Hey everyone, Matt again with Get Fit Fort Mill and Body by Brady. Uh, I'm today with Dr. Corey Reiser, Functional Health Center of the Carolinas, and he's been on a few times. Today we're going to be discussing cholesterol and statins and uh, everything about that. So if you have any questions, feel free to comment below. Um, don't forget to like this, share this with your friends. I think cholesterol is one thing that a lot of America has, so this could be something that a lot of people can touch on. So be sure to share this with everyone. So Dr. Reiser, let's first go off what cholesterol is. So cholesterol, uh, it's a sterile, has it in the name, so that just means it's a steroid alcohol. Um, most people immediately when you think of cholesterol, it's, it's demonized and it's a bad thing, uh, but it's actually important. So cholesterol is a component to many different things, your brain, um, you're going to have it in your sex hormones, so testosterone, estrogen, uh, progesterone, all of those. Um, it's actually in your nerves, so yeah. the covering of the nerves are, is called the myelin sheath. Um, so it's in a lot of things. It's important. It protects your body. Um, it, you can break it down from your total cholesterol levels to your HDLs, which are called high-density lipoproteins, and that's what most people know as your good cholesterol. Okay. Um, so that cholesterol is going to be something that helps your body protect um, the interior of the arterial walls, your cardiovascular system, um, your brain is made out of a lot of cholesterol. Um, and then, so what HDL will do is it helps get rid of the fats in the bloodstream. Um, and then you have your low density lipoproteins. Um, those are what most people know as the bad cholesterol. Mm -hmm. um, those are much larger. And if you have a higher amount of those, it tends to cause problems in the cardiovascular system. Okay. Uh, but cholesterol is important for, yeah. uh, more so than it is bad for you. It is extremely important for your body. Okay. Um, so that's where we, you know, want to make sure that there's not a misconception out there. Yeah. Okay. So when the doctor says you have high cholesterol, <clears throat> he's usually meaning that's bad. So that means your LDL is high and your HDL is low. So that doesn't mean that. So that's where I think people get confused right. is when the doctor says you have high cholesterol. Right. Exactly. But when you're supposed to have good high H. Yeah, right. right. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, this, you yeah. know, always look at your total on this. Well, yeah. you got. Oh my gosh, you have high cholesterol. You got to, got to do something about it. Eat yeah. better, and whatever else. Um, the funny thing is that back probably in the '60s and '70s, the total cholesterol. So right now, 199 and below is where you want to be. Okay. Um, according to current research, quote unquote, yeah. I'll use that loosely. Back in the '60s and '70s, if you were under 300 total you were fine. They didn't yeah. want to do anything. It was like, okay, we don't really care about it because yeah. they didn't think it really did much as far as cardiovascular risk. And, mm -hmm. and in many people's opinion, including my own, it still doesn't have much to do with your cardiovascular risk. So what you really want to look at, if you if your doctor ever says you have high cholesterol, is say, okay, um, well, break it down for me, doc. What are my HDLs? What are my LDLs? Because the reality of the situation is, as long as your HDLs, your good cholesterol is high, it can protect your body. And as long as your LDLs are low, you want that ratio of your HDL to your total cholesterol to be within range. Okay. And that's the cardiovascular risk. I'd even go further more into saying that your HDL is your good cholesterol in comparison or in ratio to your triglycerides okay. are the most important. That's probably the one thing that will tell you whether or not you're at risk for a stroke or a heart attack. So triglycerides are going to be the, the fatty uh, molecules floating through the bloodstream and that sort of thing typically goes high when you have blood sugar problems. Okay. So as long as you have high HDLs above a 54, let's say, mm -hmm. that's what you're after. And the okay. problem now is, is, and I think we're gonna to touch on this a little yeah. bit, is they're so concerned with your total number going low that they don't realize that the majority of people, uh, I'd say, I think it's right around now 40, 45% of people um, that have under 200 as a cholesterol level, which is normal, have the most heart attacks. So you got to answer. You have to ask, well, why is that? So yeah. um, you you want to be more worried about triglycerides and HDLs. Okay. So what causes someone to have the bad high cholesterol? So actually, I mean, if you look at all the research, it, it points to a lot of the oils that were supposed to be the saviors for us. So when they produced, you know, canola oil, vegetable oils, all these hydrogenated oils, peanut mm -hmm. oil. Um, these seem to be the culprit as far okay. as raising your cholesterol. Lack of exercise is going to be one thing as well because exercise is going to promote HDL production. Okay. Um, and then um, statins are going to be one thing that will be uh, a problem as well. But the raising of the cholesterol, you obviously poor diet and all those oils, everything that you're eating that has all those oils in there, 
it's not contrary to popular belief, and there's still people that still think this and argue this, mm -hmm. eating eggs and eating dietary cholesterol really has little to no effect on your actual cholesterol. Um, your body's producing cholesterol. When you mm -hmm. intake cholesterol, your body can break it down. Don't worry about eating eggs. I eat egg, eggs every single day, and okay. I'm totally fine. So um, that you have to look out for these oils and sugars and different things like that. So while we're on eggs, right, this is a little tangent. Yep. Does it matter with the yolk or egg whites? Uh, so the yolk would be would have the cholesterol. <laughs> yeah. So and that's why people yeah. and that's why the there's a million dollar industry yeah. of oh yeah now we only have egg whites but the yolk is great for you. I mean it yeah. is the most nutritious part of the egg. Yeah. It does have cholesterol, high cholesterol amounts in it, but it will not affect you. Okay. It will not affect your cholesterol. Okay. Yeah. Um. So what are statins? So a statin drug, what it will do is it basically stops your body from producing cholesterol. Okay. okay, so right there, right off the bat, you should be like, well, that's not a good thing, mm -hmm. okay? Um, and what you'll do is a, basically you'll stop producing HDLs. And the problem with the statin drug then is it really pushes the liver because the liver is producing your cholesterol and your mm -hmm. sterols. So what will happen is now your liver all of a sudden is being taxed. And you'll find that most people that are on statins will have major liver issues. And I bet everybody that's watching that's on a statin or that's going to watch this, if you're put on a statin, what do they tell you to do? I want you to come in every six months and we need to check your liver enzymes. And you're kind of like, okay, well, that that's whatever. But yeah. what they're really doing is because they know that drug is so tough on your liver, stopping your body from producing cholesterol, that your liver, most people will end up having fatty liver or liver disease just being mm -hmm. on a statin. Um, it will also, um, Basically, with a statin drug, you notice that people will have joint pain, muscle pain, and that mm -hmm. sort of stuff. Um, what will happen is you actually start to have muscle breakdown, and then your kidneys have to get rid of this protein that's happening, and you'll have kidneys that will shut, shut down. Okay. So the statin drug is in there, and it, it works great because it will stop your body from producing cholesterol, but the problem is your brain's made of cholesterol. You have all mm -hmm. these areas of the body that need cholesterol, so that's why they're linking it to dementia and all these things. Um, it's don't ever go. I mean, I would never go on a statin if I okay. could help it. Um, now there are situations where you're genetically predisposed to having high cholesterol. Try other routes. Um, there's many different stages and types of, of issues where you're gonna, you're probably going to have cholesterol okay. issues. But you got to keep the HDLs up. I'll have people come in here that have their LDLs above 99, and it's and it's bad. You know that's the bad cholesterol. But if their HDLs are high enough and their triglycerides are normal, their ratio is still going to be fine. And I'll say, hey, you're fine. I don't, yeah. I don't see any risk. Um, you know, we have one out of four people over And most of those people that come in here, are, their cholesterol is still high. And yeah. they're, you know, they're killing their bodies by taking these statins. So there's other ways to do it. There's okay. Do it. What are some ways you can lower your cholesterol? Um, so you got to address first your diet you got to get rid of all those oils that we were talking about and all those fats that we were talking about um, you got to get some good fats and good oils into your okay. diet so i always tell people fish oil get a good brand that you're going to get a really high concentration of omega-3s that will support the body's processes with uh, cholesterol regulation um, you want to limit sugar intake and uh, saturated fats are actually they found that the more saturated fats that you ingest Typically, the higher your HDLs are and the lower your LDLs are, your bad cholesterol. So butter's fine. Get grass-fed butter. Eat that. Um, I wouldn't do a lot of dairy, but mm -hmm. butter seems to be pretty okay with this. Um, and just you know, fatty fish. Um, get a lot of uh, good vegetables in your diet, obviously, and exercise because that's going to okay. make your body produce those HDLs. Keep your liver clean. It's the one thing that's, that's regulating this whole, whole yeah. thing. So as long as you can do that, I mean, it's, it's that easy. Um, now, if you do struggle, there are some things like red yeast rice. Red yeast rice has a um, it has a, uh, a fungus that grows on, or not a fu fungus, excuse me. Um, there's a, um, I believe it's like a, it's a, I forget what type of thing it is. It's a mm -hmm. fungus, I believe, but it grows on it. And what that actually does is it works as a statin in your body. Okay. Um, I think it's called monascus. Um, and what it will do is the same thing. It will kind of slow your body from producing cholesterol and bad cholesterol until you can kind of get things situated. But I wouldn't do red yeast rice long term, maybe yeah. to kickstart you into exercising, doing different things, and getting good fats in your diet. Uh, but whenever I have somebody come in with high cholesterol or cholesterol issues, I pump them full of omega threes, and we start to clean up the diet. Like that's uh -huh. number one. So, so with the fatty fish, 
like salmon. Mm -hmm. Is there a difference between wild caught and farm raised? Absolutely eating? is. Absolutely okay. is. Um, and a lot of the farm raised salmon, you'll see it's nice and pink. Mm -hmm. They're gonna, they're injecting dyes into that stuff. So you want to make sure uh, you have those fish that are out there swimming around. Yeah. They're moving around. They're not being pumped full of antibiotics, and they're not you know have, uh, eating corn fed or yeah. soy and all that kind of stuff. I don't even know what they feed stuff. But <laughs> tilapia is terrible. Yeah. Tilapia, ninety nine point nine percent is farmed. Um, but salmon, you got to get that cold water fish um, that's out there eating other fish and yeah. doing other things. So it's going to be the most nutritious for you. So um, the omega three levels and the nutrient levels in fish that are farmed are yeah. slim to none. So, so just so one knows, Clean Eat Four Mill has wild caught salmon. There it is in their bowl. <laughs> so we have wild caught salmon there. Now yeah. with uh, fish oil, mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. you can go to your big box retailers and get your fish oil for. Eight dollars, yeah. or you can go to a supplement store or to see someone, um, you know, a doctor or something like that. Mm -hmm. And the fish oil is going to be twenty-five to thirty dollars. Is right. there a difference in the fish oil that you buy? There is. There is. Okay. Um, and the funny thing is, is like if I were to sell you my, the fish oil we use, you'd look at the price and say, "Oh my gosh!" Like, then you know, it's like forty bucks a bottle, yeah. and then you can go to CVS and get one for like twelve bucks. Yeah. What I always tell people is, look at the amount of omegas. I don't care if it says. A, like you'll look on the front, and I guarantee you'll say per capsule a thousand milligrams of fish oil. Well, that's great. How many omega threes are in there? Yeah. Flip it around, and it'll tell you. Most of the capsules in these stores, it's going to be about two hundred to three hundred milligrams of actual omegas per one thousand milligrams of of the fish oil. Yeah. The one I use, the capsule has a thousand milligrams, and it's nine hundred and fifty milligrams of yeah. omega threes. So even though it's costing you more to purchase it up yeah. front, it will last you significantly longer because yeah. you're taking a lower dose. Most of the stuff in CVS, you have to take six to eight capsules a day. Yeah, just so it's to gonna get, catch up to you. Exactly, just get a therapy dose. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, okay. Yeah, you, know, you just got to look out for brands that are, are you know, tested and mm -hmm. have a high concentration. And they're getting it from those good fish. Yeah. Um, krill oil is a good one too. Okay. Um, Flaxseed, I'm not sold yet because you also have a lot of omega sixes that are in there, and that's an, an inflammatory yeah. type of omega. So you got to balance it out. Okay. Um, Awesome. So we went over a lot of stuff with uh, cholesterol today. Do you want to just give a quick rundown? Um, um, yeah, basically, I mean, cholesterol is not a bad thing. That's okay. one thing, one big takeaway. Cholesterol is not bad. Um, worry about your HDLs, your good cholesterol, and your triglycerides. Those are the two you have to worry about. Worry about that ratio. Um, if you can help it, try to avoid going on a statin. I mean, eventually, I foresee in the future, Canada is already going for this to totally ban statins just because of how bad they are. Um, I was looking through kind of some of my notes here that I wrote down of good studies. Um, people with 180 or below total cholesterol, which is, is great, have three times the incidence of stroke as the normal population. It's pretty crazy. Um, and what we have now is um, another uh, study coming out with as far as diabetes, it increases your diabetes risk. So I have a lot of people that will come in with diabetes mm -hmm. And they'll say, yeah, the oh, funny thing is, it's right around the time I was put on a statin, about a year later, I had diabetes. In Australia, they did a study here. They found that elderly women with high-dose statins had a 50% higher diabetes diagnosis. Wow. 50%. So all you got to do for cholesterol regulation is exercise, clean up your diet, make sure you're getting good fats in your diet, mm -hmm. like I said, with these wild-caught yeah. fish or fish oil, um, and make sure your liver is not filled up with pesticides and hormones and all these other things. Eat clean, yeah. and you can start to regulate your cholesterol better. Um, that's it's as simple as that. So you know, if you really want to get rid of this stuff, don't just pop the pill and, and, and yeah. hope and pray because eventually, yeah, I mean, your cholesterol may be great, but you're putting yourself at risk for heart attack, stroke, liver disease, kidney disease, and dementia. And it, it so, kind of goes back to what we've talked. It seems like every episode. It's people are taking these because their symptoms are not fixing the problem to why they're having this in the first place. Exactly. And that's what people need to do is figuring out why is this happening mm -hmm. and fix that instead of just trying to, you know, uh, make their symptoms feel better. Exactly. I mean, we say this every time. I know we're probably going to say it many more <laughs> times as we do these. Find the root cause of your problems yeah. and you will fix and let everything take care of itself. That's yeah. it. Awesome. Well, thanks for your time today. Thanks for everyone checking us out. Um, you can go there on the Functional Health Center of the Carolinas on Facebook. It's on the website, so you can always reach out to Dr. Riser and see how we can help you with ever what's going on with you. 
Um, we'll see you guys soon. Don't forget to like and share this post with anyone you know that could be dealing with cholesterol issues or would think this is some interesting information. Thanks for your time. Have a great day. Thanks a lot.